and from Yangon uh, University of Medicine 2 and SGSMC India. Okay, you tested your bells. Okay, your question is, name the type of synaptic modulation in the spinal cord involving opiate neurotransmitter in pain transmission. Name the type of synaptic modulation in the spinal cord involving opiate neurotransmitter in pain transmission. No talking, please, behind. Hello. Okay, so the synaptic modulation of the all the in uh, all the synaptic in the spinal cord is the presynaptic presynaptic uh presynaptic inhibition of the opiate. That's correct. <laughs> yeah, we might like to remind you that we will uh, go by very strict rules. So if we catch anyone talking behind, we may have to penalize Mark. Okay, so please observe the rules. Yeah, since the um, <laughs> yeah okay. Uh, Sichuan, your question is, name the hemodynamic stimulus that directly inhibits renin secretion from the juxta glomerular cells. Name the hemodynamic stimulus that directly inhibits renin secretion from the juxta glomerular cells. Increased blood pressure. That's correct, yeah. Okay, your question is, McQuay, uh, no, McQuay, sorry, University of Medicine 2, state the effect, the two things, state the effect of body temperature at 36 and 2 alkalosis on the hemoglobin oxygen association. State the effect of one body temperature at 36 and two, alkalosis on the hemoglobin oxygen association. Um, both shift the hemoglobin oxygen association cuff to the left. Okay, what does that mean? Shift uh, to the left? Left means uh, increased affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen. That's correct, yeah. SGSMC. So uh, we want a simple answer. On standing from lying down, state the reason whether there is also significant arterial pulling, as in venous pulling. Okay, simple answer, a simple explanation. On standing from lying down, state the reason whether there is also significant arterial pulling, as in venous pulling. Pooling. Venus pooling, you know? You heard of Venus pooling? Yes or no? Yes, yes. Yes, okay. So we just change the word arterial pooling. Is there significant arterial pooling and why? Uh, no, there is not significant arterial pooling uh, because the baroreceptor reflex is activated and it causes, uh, due to decreased blood pressure in the carotid uh, and aortic receptors, it causes increased sympathetic stimulation which causes vasoconstriction. Answer is wrong. Yes. Because there is n there is no significant because in arteria the compliance of the artery is less is less than the venous. So That's correct. Yeah. yeah. The, the reason why there is venous pulling is because the veins are very compliant structures, whereas the arteries are not. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Second cycle. Mahido, your question is uh, two, two short parts. Name the intestinal peristaltic pattern during the interdigestive period. And second one, state its proposed function. Name the intestinal peristaltic pattern during the interdigestive period. And two, state its proposed function. The peristalsis in intestinal is for the propel the the food to uh, to be the feces. It's called the uh, 
is called the hostile hostile contraction. Sorry, what a contraction? Hostile. How do you spell it? Uh, oh, hostile. Okay. And then second part. Two. Okay. Your answer is wrong. Okay, no answer. The question is, uh, state name the intestinal peristaltic pattern during the inter-digestive period. Can, In, can I answer again, please? Inter-digestive period. So it's actually the migrating motility complex. Not, not during, yeah, okay. And the uh, function of the MMC is uh, housekeeping function. Okay, your question is, uh, Sichuan, state with reasons what happens to the plasma calcium at the renal glomerulus. State with reasons what happens to the plasma calcium at the renal glomerulus. Excuse me, renal what? Glomerulus, G-L-O-M-E-R-U-L-U-S. Oh. It uh, uh, the 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 the, ca the calcium in in plasma uh, filtered freely uh, to the uh, glomerular bone. Uh, I mean, I mean, bone space. Answer is wrong. Uh, it will be filtered by sixty percent because. 40% is bound to the protein. That's correct. Yeah. Okay, um, Yang Dong, you have two urine, two urine samples have a pH of 6.5 and 4.5. How many times difference in hydrogen ion concentration is there between the two urine samples? Two urine samples have a pH of 6.5 and 4.5. How many times difference in hydrogen ion concentration is there between the two urines? 100. 100 is correct. Can you tell us how you get 100? Because 6.5 minus 4.2 is uh, P, um 10 power minus 2 and okay, a lot. Right. Yeah. Every pH you need is about 10 times. Okay, that's right. Okay, fourth uh, question in this cycle. During, during jogging, do you go jogging? Sometimes, okay, during jogging. How does the pressure changes in the thorax help to improve your cardiac stroke volume? During jogging, how does the pressure changes in the thorax help to improve cardiac stroke volume? Uh, during jogging, there is deep inspiration and expiration. So during deep inspiration, there is an increase in the thoracic volume. This leads to a decrease in intrathoracic pressure. So this helps in increasing venous return to the heart and increases the stroke volume. That's correct. Yeah. Okay, the, yeah, quite even here. So last cycle of four questions in this third session. Your question, uh, Mahidol, is during voluntary hyperventilation, state the location of the neurons that produce the increased tidal volume of breathing. During voluntary hyperventilation, state the location of the neurons that produce the increased tidal volume of breathing. In the cerebrum, cerebral cortex. That's correct, yeah. SEU, your question is, the speed of skeletal muscle contraction is determined by two factors. One is a skeletal muscle intracellular component, and the other one is an external factor. Name them. Okay, the speed of skeletal muscle contraction is determined by one, skeletal muscle intracellular component, and two, an external factor. Name them. 
it's a pre node and after node. And pre node is the um, the cross branch, the, uh, the number of the cross branch, and the after node is the uh, uh, just <laughs> the after the node. Answer is wrong. The intracellular is the rate of uh, myosin TPS, and the extra is the afterload or the uh, the afterload. The af afterload. I mean the uh, yeah the afterload that determine the velocity. Like when you plot the graph from the. Uh, the judges decided the answer is wrong. Yeah, the first answer is correct. It's myosin ATPase, but the second one is not called afterload. It's load. Yeah, afterload is a different uh, definition in physiology. It's cardiac muscle. It's the load on the muscle. Yeah, uh, load. Yeah, load and afterload has different meaning in physiology. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. The uh, question to. Uh, Yang Dong is okay, two, two short parts. Why does one feel hotter in a humid day compared to a less humid or drier day, even though both days have similar ambient temperature of 40 degrees? And then the second one, state the location of thermal receptors. Let me repeat. Why does one feel hotter in a humid day compared to a less humid or drier day even if both days have the same ambient temperature of 40 degrees centigrade. State the location of the thermal receptors. Uh, one feels hotter in a humid day because... <clears throat> yes? Are you still talking? Uh, <laughs> it's... Its uh, receptor is warm receptor, and is located in skin subcute. What is the first answer for the first part? Why does one feel warmer? Uh, because of the warm warm receptors. Okay, and the second one, the location is. Location is subcutaneous. Okay, and the answer is wrong. Uh, on a more humid day, a person will feel more hotter because. The uh, cooling effect due to evaporation, which contributes to 22% of the cooling effect, is not present or is lowered. And the uh, location of the receptors, the increase in temperature is directed by the cutaneous receptors and uh, abdominal viscera and the spinal cord. And the anterior hypothalamus is, uh, sorry, the decrease in temperature is uh, detected by the cutaneous and the ab uh, cutaneous receptors and the abdominal viscera. And the increase in temperature is detected by the anterior okay, hypothalamus. That's, that's, that's fine, yeah. <laughs> So uh, I think the, 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 the key phrase is that uh, when it's more humid, there is decreased evaporative cooling. So you feel warmer, okay? And of course, there are many thermal receptors, and you, I think you name all of them for us. Yeah, okay. But, uh, hypothalamic and so on. Okay. Last question uh, in this uh, last quarterfinal session. Um, okay, state the cardiac hormone that promotes urinary sodium excretion. That's the first part. And then state the mechanism of how this hormone affects the filtered sodium load. Let me repeat. State the cardiac hormone that promotes urinary sodium excretion. And two, state the mechanism of how it affects the filtered sodium load. Okay, the hormone is atrial natriuretic polypeptide or ANP and its mechanism for uh, increasing the uh, sodium filtered load is decreasing the uh, arteriolar resistance to increase the permeability of the capillaries thus to increase the GFR and also prove a negative feedback to the renin uh, hormone. Okay, can you, can you uh, say the second part again slowly? 
Okay. The uh, how 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 it affects the filtered lo sodium load. The ATL natriuretic polypeptide is a vasodilator, decreasing the uh, 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 resistance to blood flow and then increasing the blood flow to increase the hydrostatic pressure, capillary hydrostatic pressure to increase the GFR. Okay, that's also. fine. Thank you. Yeah. So the winning team is from Mahidol and we will wait for the uh, summary of the results in a short time here. Yeah.